Okay, I think we're live, girly. All right. <laughs> hey, y'all. Okay, so this is Olivia and Amanda, and I am just bringing Amanda on today. She is one of my clients who has really worked hard on healing her diastasis, and I just wanted you to hear her story. Now, listen, she's got seven kiddos, and not all of them are with her today, and so since your mom's... I know that y'all can handle maybe hearing the kids in the background. So we will just go through this. And Amanda, if I'm not looking at the camera, it's because I'm going to share in my group. Okay. But this little lady right here has worked really hard. She has, she was eight fingers wide when she first came to me. And now I think you're a three. And so, yeah. yeah. And then were you two knuckles deep or deeper? I, I didn't know how deep I was. Okay. Because I couldn't feel how deep it was. Yeah. And so I have recently figured out that I'm a lot shallower than I used to be. Yay. So see, that's so good. And the re I mean, I just believe you can give so many moms hope because um, a lot of people would look at you and say, oh, you're just going to have to have surgery. There's just no way this can happen. So um, and plus seven C-sections. And hey, listen, your kids are nine and under, yeah. right? nine and under so really her body never got a chance to heal as she was going through all this so she had some different issues going on so while i share amanda do you want to just kind of tell a little bit about you and well, you know, wherever you want to start <laughs> um i don't know i did i had i started with my oldest who is nine and you know, we planned on the live birth. We planned on, you know, everything going as planned. And he flipped breech in the middle of labor. I was five centimeters oh, dilated. <laughs> They're like, um, we, we feel feet now. So that was crazy. Um, I, I've had crazy, crazy C-sections. I had a placenta previa following that. Um, and he was delivered early. And then I tried to be back my third round. And he was just, I never fully went into labor after 16 hours after my water broke and I gave up. Okay. Um, and then ever since then, they just, I seem to heal faster after, like, each one has been kind of easier, but the, from the actual C-section. But it takes me at least three months to feel somewhat normal. And I haven't okay. been until the last few months of going through the boot camp again, feeling actually no, back to normal, like to where my husband would say, I have my wife back. Oh, and that's like awesome. That dragging and, you know, the aches and pains are leaving. And that's that's been a huge blessing. Mommy. Yeah, because you're not only dealing with... Mom, um, you have to come here. lost. Okay. My, my, um, I'm sorry. See, my, we have kids at home and we're live, right? <laughs> you got to go in there, baby, okay? that's... Well, Yes, mommy. I'll talk to you after this is done. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah. So, Amanda was, I mean, just like a lot of other moms, when you're dealing with um, separation of the abs with diastasis, a lot of times you have back pain, knee pains, all other kinds going on. And you just don't even know, you know, where to start, what to do. You don't know where it's coming from. So, <laughs> Amanda, you know, went through, it, it, it yeah. to start anything was painful. Like, yeah. you know, because I was so weak. I had no strength left. I mean, surgery after surgery of destroying any muscle that may have been built in the process mm -hmm. has been awful. Like, I have horrible lower back pains. I was, I mean, I got to the point where I couldn't even get out of bed hardly in the morning because it was so bad. But... But you have done amazing. Let me tell you, this girl has worked hard. I mean, when you think about it and you sit here and say, okay, I have an eight finger wide diastasis. I mean, ladies, you can put eight fingers, uh, you know, between your muscles. That's crazy. And so this is just hope that it can come back, that linear alba tissue can strengthen up. Is it ever too late? I always tell women, no, but it does take work. And I know Amanda's done things with me a couple times, and it's okay. I mean, the kids, she's in the car with her kids, so. 
<laughs> and I know it's showing that I have two comments, but Be Live is not really letting me. I think I'm going to go on my phone and look at the comments. So, okay. Be Live has gotten really strange with things. But anyway, yeah. So, Amanda just, she started with the boot camp, just the accountability package. And with through the Facebook group, and you started seeing some improvements, but then life happened, right? Yeah, life happened, and my three-month-old baby needed surgery on his skull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which How, really, yeah. yeah, which set it back in a whole different kind of way, because it actually wasn't me for a change. Go ahead. <laughs> but, yeah, I was, I saw, I mean, just from that, I went from an eight to at least a six and I didn't even I didn't even get to complete the whole program I only got yeah. half of it at that time and so you were just and it wasn't even probably being consistent was it like, only the first consistent. couple weeks like yeah. like most people I will, <laughs> that I tend to I mean when I watch them like people <laughs> tend to drop off after the first few weeks but I kept, I tried to stay consistent with my breathing and my alignment and that helped a ton. It made me feel stronger. Okay. So it made you feel stronger. <laughs> it's okay, Amanda. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. So then you um, came back to me and then she worked. She was, she's been one of my one-on-ones that we've worked on -on with, with our pelvic floor physical therapist. And I'm so glad that we have because. <clears throat> like even Amanda's knee was hurting and she couldn't do stuff correctly. So working on your back and your pelvic floor actually helped your knee pain, which is yeah. crazy because sometimes you don't know what's going to fix your knee, but pelvic floor and core is so important. Um, yeah. It was, having, working with her was amazing. Like it it changed everything because everything that would normally stop me in my tracks because it hurt and I didn't know how to fix it or I would just try to push through the pain and make it worse. Like because of Janine, I was able to get out of bed. Like simple stretches to help me release my lower back was, I can't even tell you the life that came back because I was sleeping better. I wasn't rolling over in pain all night. That's awesome. I know you would, I know just getting your little testimonies back. I was like, oh my gosh, her pain is going away. And guys, I mean, and I know we're talking about diastasis here, but it was, that was what was so huge. I think for me with Amanda is knowing that, Hey, your pain can get better. You know, yeah. Well, and I find an energy that level. It was, well, because I told my husband, I'm like, there was, I, I lost a ton of inches. Like, so I can't say there wasn't a physical change. The weight didn't drop like I wanted, but the inches were dropping, which was great. Yeah. But more than that, I felt good. I felt energy. I didn't feel pain. And that was more, I didn't even know that that was more important to me because I didn't even, I didn't believe that it was possible to live without pain. Well, you don't want to even work on healing a diastasis if you're in pain. Well, I thought that it might help, but really everything else affected the diastasis. Like, I couldn't sit in proper posture at first. Like, I mean, the first couple of weeks, I was having horrible back spasms because my back didn't even know how to stretch and strengthen and be the way that it needed to be. Yeah. But you pushed through it, and you got through it, and you did it. So that's probably some of the questions that I get asked all the time. Is my back supposed to hurt? How, how is this supposed to work? Is my, you know, how do I get in the correct alignment? It does take a little while to learn all that. And then I'm asked, you know, you're asking your muscles to do different things. So you are going to have some, you know, muscle soreness from getting into correct alignment because it's something your body and muscles aren't used to. And it does, it feels awkward when I'm asking you to breathe different ways when working out. It's like, wait, what? Okay, so am I breathing in or am I breathing out? Or, okay, how's my back? But it does become easier. It does. Well, and at first I think I was trying too hard to do it for too long. <laughs> um, and so it just didn't... I think I was overdoing it, you know, um, because I wanted to do it constantly, but you, I just, 
it became too much. But then I just noticed that I would do it naturally. And that's what yeah, like, see, really that's got me like, in the kitchen. Like, I'd be like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Like, it actually felt better. And I know it was really eye-opening when all of a sudden I automatically corrected myself because I felt better in alignment. And I could feel that it was just not right. Well, let me tell you, Cassandra said, I'm so used to tuning out the kids' noises. I'll keep going, guys. Do you need to talk? Do you need to talk to them real quick? You can. Is it, are they okay? You can. Check Gabriel, on them. Darius, <laughs> please keep your hands to yourself. It's a four and three year old that like to. I, I, this is our new van because you know life happens and we yeah. were in a car accident. But, they got in a bad car wreck. Yeah. Um, I think I need to not have them sit next to each other. Yeah, I used to tell my boys, okay, sit on your hands. Sit on your hands. If you can say God hold her, like sit on your hands. And Jessica Cooper, she said, Lucy's watching with me and knows those are her babies calling. Yes. <laughs> and Cassandra said, you're speaking live, just living with pain. Thanks for doing this interview. So, yay, I'm glad. So, yeah, it's important to know how to get, how to adjust because the pain that you're in a lot of times, you don't think it's going to be fixed the way that you think it needs to be fixed? <laughs> no. Well, going back to that whole, like, my knee was, I couldn't do my squats. I couldn't do lunges. It was really bothering me, and it was my upper back. Yeah, it but was your the, upper back. <laughs> you had head. things pulling on things that needed to be stretched out and loosened right. to help. Mm -hmm. But it's... I'm back in some pain a little bit, but I know how to work through it. And it's been tremendous being able, it's it's a freedom to know how to work with it now. And and she's back in pain, guys, because she got into a wreck and then she fell. <laughs> so she's sending me these pictures and I'm like, okay, Amanda, no more accidents. None. I know how to do it Not well, apparently. Anymore. <laughs> so we're not speaking that. We're not no. speaking that, no. no. So what are some of the things? Oh, and she just told me as we got on here, guys. So how many moms have hernias that are dealing with diastasis? So she, she still has a hernia, and, you know, it's a hole. But she has even said when you worked on your alignment and your breathing and everything, and this can happen, the hole has gotten smaller, so that is amazing. And a lot of times to, that that can, that can happen if you get back into correct alignment. Yeah, I used to be able to actually fit two fingers in the hole. Because I would, I mean, and then now I can barely get my pinky in. So <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that was. I was like, wait, they want me to do surgery. And after seven C-sections, I am not up for any for surgery. No. Well, you've already got all that scar tissue going on in there. And it's, you know, that's something that I'm trying to work on. And that's a process because that's a lot of C-sections, too. Yeah. And working right on, we, you know, helping you even, um, I, uh, Public for Physical Therapist is helping her with, and this is all done through video, but she shows Amanda what to do with massaging her scar from the C-sections. And, you know, there's just different things you can even do for scar tissue. So, um, scar tissue can affect a lot of things after you have C-sections. I did not know as much yeah. as I learned from Janine. As, yeah, Janine's what. awesome. She's awesome. And I'm so glad she's come on my team. What she said, she said, uh, she said, not even a pinky. That's awesome. I've got four kids under five over here and I'm turning them out too. I think this must be a sixth sense or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad that, as that's what I said. Y'all are mamas. Y'all understand all this. And then if you hear TV in the background, that's the free girl. I'm trying to keep her situated over there. So um, anyway, what was in the other thing? What was, um, I want to kind of address something else when you're going through and healing your core. How much of it is mindset stuff? 90% of it. Okay. Yeah. 90%. And so this is something we really kind of worked on. <laughs> it is. Well, you know, when you just believing, first of all, that you can, that there is life beyond pain, like that really helps. Like that, 
I no longer believed that I had to be in pain, that there were ways to get through it. Yeah. Um, and then just believing that I could because I've been so weak and, you know, surgery after surgery. And by the time that I would finally get recouped from one surgery, I'd be pregnant again and going through all the aches and pains to where I could hardly walk. I lived with sciatica pain almost through at least my last three pregnancies. Mm. So now how's that getting? I have that pain. It's non-existent. Non-existent. Okay. (laughs) Not unless, you know, even after the fall, I didn't really, but I knew how to stretch my back and kind of knew how to do all that. Mm -hmm. I knew how to be in alignment too. So I could feel it if it was off. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's so amazing when we can start putting, I always tell ladies, if we can start putting function over fitness and it doesn't mean that you can't work out, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, strengthen your body. You just have to learn function over fitness that you've got to learn how our bodies were meant to function. That's just so important. Well, and when I couldn't, Ellie, when I couldn't do some of the workouts and I couldn't, the function stretches. Yeah. The the stretches and the breathing helped me more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I actually enjoyed them more because I could feel my body moving the way it should. Right. Which and, I didn't know before. Well, here's an interesting fact. Our diaphragm is one of the number one muscles in our body to help get our um, body in correct alignment. The diaphragm is amazing and one of the most un- underused muscles. So when you can get that thing turned on, our body tries to start getting into correct alignment. And then when you learn um, correct alignment, it's even better. But then like what Amanda said, it's the stretches. So many women want to skip past the stretching, but that's what's going to help get our body there. It's going to help our body be able to move better, to function better, to work out better. You've got to implement these things. It's not one magic exercise. No, and it helped me to do the everyday life that I didn't. I mean, even some of the stuff on the floor where and it was able to stretch muscles I didn't even know were tight. And yeah. then I felt more freedom to move properly because I've been so bound by scar tissue from yes. <laughs> not just the accident, like, or not just from the C-sections, but I had a couple accidents before. And so I just, it was amazing. I, I, my husband was probably, his comments were more effective because I kind of felt it. Well, I knew I was feeling it and I knew I was getting there, but for him to be able to see it and to see the energy and to go, wow, you're not dragging your feet, you know, by dinner time and you're still ready to play a game after dinner and, you know, you're not going to bed at eight o'clock. And so all of those things. He, yeah, he felt like he had his wife back and I wasn't constantly in recovery. So what I love about Amanda's story is it's not just about healing your core. Like, as you can tell, we're not just talking about the diastasis here. She really embraced everything. She embraced the whole body thing, you know, trying to eat correctly. Did she was she perfect? No, no, weren't, none of us are what but in her mindset. Because we, it's so important to de-stress. It's so important to have our beliefs right. Um, and then the physical part of getting, working, you know, the exercise, the breathing, the alignment to help her diastasis come back together. Um, the depth I was so excited about. She said, Libby, I didn't realize, um, I didn't understand how deep I was. <laughs> And then when she started feeling the linea alba tissue come back and start thickening, that was just, you know, amazing to her. So I always tell her and everybody, the depth is the most important thing. And people don't realize that. So when she started telling me that, I was like jumping for joy. <laughs> yeah, because you would always ask too, how deep are you? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I'm like, because I always thought because I'm a bigger girl that you – that I just maybe be, just had an extra fluff and I couldn't feel it. Like it was, but then when I started feeling, I'm like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. And it was so exciting. I was like, woo, she's getting there. And um, yeah, but 
you've done the work, girl. I mean, you have done the, the work. The walking helped a lot. The so walking, how did that help you, do you think? Well, de-stressing, for one. Yeah. Like, it helped the bloating tremendously. Like, we found any way. My husband come home and dinner would be ready. I would eat a little bit later and go walking because it was getting, you know, it wasn't staying light as um, long. Um and honestly, after a day home with seven kids, it was nice to just go by myself and just take some deep breaths and stand it, you know, walk in alignment and try to do my breathing. But I would listen to a podcast or an encouraging talk, which helped my mindset a lot, or sometimes just walking and praying. But yeah, walking was, it helped me to relax so that I could enjoy life again, too. Yeah. And so self-care for mamas is so important. And if Amanda with seven kids, nine years and younger can do self-care, we have no excuses. <laughs> then that's when I'm like, all my moms are like, you know, they'll, if they don't have time for self-care, I'm like, yeah. I, and there's another lady too that I'm always like, she always makes time for self-care. And I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, I have no excuse and nobody has any excuse for this. <laughs> but sometimes it's only five minutes. Sometimes it's just that, like a walk down the street to breathe or, mm -hmm. you know, every, send everybody to their room and sit down with a hot cup of tea for five minutes. Set the timer so everybody knows when they can come running and screaming. Yep. Yep. But just to breathe deeply <laughs> and relax because yeah. as a crazy it's just a crazy life. Yeah. So that's something I harp on my clients on is de-stressing techniques <laughs> and mindset stuff. I'm like, okay, we can work on all this, but hey, let's get back here because if, and if you say something, I'm like, wait, what? No, that's not the truth. Let's figure out the truth and let's start speaking that because that's, what's going to get you through this because there's so much negativity saying, well, you need surgery. And I'm not, I, hey, listen, I'm not somebody who's against surgery. I'm not going to tell you to not go have surgery. I, but what I'm going to tell you is let's get to the root of the problem and work on it first. Because even if you have surgery, you're going to want to have worked on that root of the problem. You want to get strong and to be able to make it through your surgery. If that's your goal, if your goal is like, I don't like the way this looks and you want to have this body that looks like it never had kids, then, <laughs> then you need to make sure to get to the root of the issue problem because everybody has different goals, but learning correct alignment, learning correct breathing, learning de-stressing techniques, learning mindset, um, learning the stretching, self-care, taking care of yourself, all that's going to be important. It all goes together. You can't leave one without the other. And honestly, no. like you said, the mindset is probably the most important thing in all right. of it. It's it, 90%. Yeah. And, and so it was, it was probably my biggest struggle because I didn't, I didn't know how to be positive about myself or my situation. So you really helped me with that to give me the words to go, Oh, I can be that. Like I am that. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad. I'm so glad that makes my heart happy. And you know, just uh, Sandra said, 90% that makes so much sense. She healed her life. And then she said extra fluff, LOL, me too. She's got extra fluff. <laughs> so I just, um, and so I'm even going to start adding in a new aspect into the boot camp when I, it opens um, is we're going to do like a powwow on video and everybody's going to tell me their goals. Everybody's going to get a vision of what they want because without a vision, we perish. And so we have to have a vision. <laughs> right. Well, and I think sometimes we need the, the big powwow would help because I didn't know what my vision could be. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I knew I wanted to get healthier and I knew that this would be a part of it, but I didn't know, like, I didn't know being pain free could be a goal. Like that was like, just not yeah. something I even considered. So Okay, I'm going to go a little deep with y'all on here, just so you can get in my brain a little bit. Um, so God gave us an imagination. <clears throat> I know Amanda's, you know, she's trying to talk about this. <laughs> what are we using our imagination for? Okay, are we using it to worry? Are we using it to think on things we shouldn't be? Because 
we can we get to frame our lives with our beliefs and our words and we can actually imagine things for good and not bad so whatever you picture whatever you can have vision we can grasp a hold of it that's faith and that is us you know just grabbing hold and saying this is possible but if you never believe for those kinds of things how are you even going to get it because you're if you're over here thinking i'm always going to be that way you are always going to be that way because you're not looking for answers and you know when you're looking for answers and you believe answers end up coming to you it's it's it's, it was amazing to watch i mean like i felt like i kind of watched it happen to me yeah (laughs) <laughs> but, but it's amazing. Like I can, there's. I mean, I still struggle. Like it's a daily. I mean, oh yeah. Which it's it's funny to watch sometimes because I am still three fingers wide. Mm-hmm. But and it seems like these last three are going to be the hardest to get through. You're going to hit this like what happens because since she was and this happens with a lot of moms, they hit kind of a plateau. So there could be some other things going on. So I'm wondering if you know I would. Um, going to do fascia tissue release. I don't think you've done that yet, really. And I'm wondering if that's something else we need to work on. So there's a lot of tools um, that can actually help. And we're, I'm having an interview. It was supposed to be this month, but with a lady who's coming into our class in either two or three months, and she's going to show us how to actually work on that uh, fascia tissue ourselves with Yamana balls. So, and how to massage to get the, the, the fascia tissue can be bound up so tight that it's holding our muscles together. So there's some different tools to work on, but it, like I said, this is a whole body issue. So if you've hit a plateau, then you've got to kind of look, okay, is my linea alba tissue still um, responding? Okay. Is, okay. So I've done this, I've done this. So then we've got to kind of break it down and that's a good thing, you know, it's making me make a mental note for you and say, okay, Amanda, she's at three. What can we do? And so here, let's let's open up the toolbox and let's figure out some other tools. So, because there are, but the basic foundations you have to have in place with alignment and breathing and learning how to work out and, and having um, core strengthening workouts, you know, how to work your core through every workout learning how to have your pelvic floor be healthy and functioning that's going to be huge you can't you have to have those in place and then you can say okay let's let's add in some of these different tools well in the mindset too (laughs) it's life-changing i mean it it didn't it didn't just affect my body it affected every part of my life my motherhood my marriage my home it's yeah you start changing one you 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 can't just do one thing and leave out the rest it starts to it just bleeds into the rest of it and and it's my whole life has changed and it's yeah. not even all about my body anymore i love that amanda that's why i was bringing you on i said i'm bringing you on <laughs> see i'm gonna tear up hang on <laughs> I said, I'm bringing you on because you're going to give these moms hopes because I, if you read like my emails that I get from the hopelessness that these moms feel, I think, oh, we just, they need hope because hope deferred makes the heart sick (laughs) and we need to keep our joy. We need to keep our hope and belief. And so anyway, I just appreciate you so much. I appreciate you and the joy that you have brought back to my life. Aw. So, see, and I get to make friends. <laughs> I get to make online friends. So, I just love it. Um, but I know Amanda's got the kiddos. So, I just wanted to bring y'all on here and just let y'all listen to her story and that you have hope. And if y'all have questions, if you're watching the replay, just put them in and you know, I could come in and answer questions. If there's one that you have for Amanda, I'll send it over to her or tag her or something. Um, but I, I did open registration for my boot camp. I'm sorry it's late. My boot camp is kind of late. We've had a busy, crazy May, if you only knew. <laughs> uh, it's finally like, oh, okay, it's slowing down. So, um, she said, thank you so much. She's receiving all the hope. You receive it, Cassandra. Yes. 
So, um, but I did open it. The registration's open today and the registration will close 4th to 6th, June 6th, but we will start all together June 4th. So there's a link to that. Or if you want to schedule a call with me and see if you want to work with me more one-on-one -on -one or which one you think would be better for you, you could do that at oliviacagle.com forward slash apply, A-P-P-L-Y. I can put that in the comments too. Um, but I'd be happy to chat with you and see. So um, anyway, I'm so glad y'all are on here watching and hearing her story. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Are you good? <clears throat> I think I'm good. You're good. Okay. Do you, you want to say, can you wave? She's got her little princess crown on today. Aww. Hi. <laughs> there he is. Hmm. No, is that Amanda? She's in her she's in her van. Yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, look, look. Oh, look. There's her kiddos. <laughs> it looks like my daughter fell asleep. <laughs> They're used to falling asleep with all the different noises, huh? Uh, well, the the noises don't bother them, but they've been used to being in the car. Oh yeah. Okay. With all the running around that we've had to do. Uh -uh, leave that on there. Oh look, she's <laughs> unplugged the speaker so she, or the headphones so she can hear you. <laughs> Hi. 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 All right. Well, you have a good day, and um, thank you. You're welcome, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. 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 Mommy, I like Amanda. You like Amanda.